Welcome to A Home That Heals. I'm Dee, along with my daughter, Bree. And today we're going to talk about something that is right in front of us, uh, something that we maybe overlook recognizing the way that we should, especially when there's so many things to complain and grumble about and maybe get frustrated and discouraged about. But this one is something we can't overlook. This weekend is Father's Day, and that gives us an opportunity to pause and reflect and express our gratitude for the remarkable men who guide and nurture our children. So today on A Home That Heals, grab a cup of coffee, let's sit down, and let's just appreciate the men in our lives. I know when we talk about Father's Day, it it is difficult because some people grew up with amazing fathers Mm -hmm. that just played such a pivotal, incredible role in their lives, and some did not. Some have father figures in their life that kind of took over some of those roles and, and just had a profound impact. Some do not. And even right now, you know, I know that there are women raising their kiddos that have just these awesome husbands that are these incredible dads and they're working together as this team. But there are marriages that struggle with that. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And there's divorce and there's moms who are raising their kids that just so wish that their, their kiddos had a father in their life. So we realize there's a lot of complexities to this. However, we're really going to focus this this podcast on just appreciating who God designed the father of our children to be if they are playing a role in their child's life and and focusing on that and not not getting caught up in all the complaints and the ways that we grumble, just kind of like we talked mm-hmm, about last mm-hmm. week, not letting ourselves go down that track too far. And really bringing it back and appreciating the men that God has placed in our lives to raise and love our children. Don't you wonder if your husband would be perfectly honest what he could say about, you know, the things that really drive him crazy about you, you know, or me. (laughs) And uh, because we can easily think of those things that drive us crazy about our husbands that are, you know, fathering or grandfathering our children. But um, I think if we could somehow understand that, yeah, we all have that. We all drive each other crazy. That's mm-hmm. just kind of the way it is. Yeah. And and we're not all... It makes life fun. <laughs> That's right? right. Well, it should. It should, should, should. it should, if we could, you know, not get focused on the things that frustrate us. But what I, what I wonder is that if we could just focus on, okay, I know I drive him crazy because I do this. He drives me crazy because he does that. Nobody's perfect. So focus on what's the greatest thing about your dad, your husband, or whatever. And I'm just going to talk about my dad for just a minute. My dad, who I miss terribly, he's been gone many years now, he was a phenomenal listener. Mm. He, he was just so good at that. And he would listen to me, because you know me, I can talk forever. He would listen to me for hours. And I remember him telling stories about one time when I was just learning to talk and he decided to time it and see how long I could babble on just, you know, just (laughs) on his knee. And I would go for, I don't remember the time now, but it was a long time. So that's what I really remember, although there are other wonderful memories. But um, I I think that's worth pondering, thinking about, focusing on and realizing that, you know, maybe he wasn't great at something else, but he was great at that. And that is a really important thing. It really is. And I think that's the the challenge a lot of times we face as moms, right? We see our way as the best way. You mean <laughs> like raising your kids raising and your that kids. kind of thing? Yeah. yeah. And you know best. We, yeah, <laughs> I read know, all the books. I, <laughs> exactly. And we, we can see that the way we would do something isn't the way that he's doing it. And, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, pausing mm-hmm. to really reflect and think about the fact that that's that's how God designed it. He didn't design our kiddos to be raised by two of us. He designed us to be raised by one of us that will, you know, love and care and nurture them in a certain way. And read all the books and figure out all <laughs> the stuff. All the yeah. And then by their father who is going to love and nurture them in a different way and mm-hmm. give them mm-hmm. skills and tools and help them along in a way that we really can't. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I think especially for me, which I think I, I see this very, very evidently, both with my boys and my girls, but I think because I had three boys first, mm-hmm. it really became clear to me that there were things my husband had to teach them that I could not. You know, even if I tried, even if I tried to say all the right things mm-hmm. and, and, you know, read the book and, and tried to do it all, they 
looked up to their dad in a way that they were never going to look up to me. Yeah. And that's okay. And it's beautiful and but, wonderful. And yeah, but kind of hard, isn't it sometimes in a way? I mean, you know, because, because, because your husband isn't home all the time when he comes home, it's oh. like, hello, oh, you yeah. know, it's great. It's, you know, wonderful. But anyway, kind of, that's kind of a rabbit trail, but it oh, is a little hard. Yeah. Yeah. I think especially a lot of us moms who stay home with the kids mm-hmm. a lot. Um, yeah. There's not much excitement. In <laughs> fact, I, I'm pretty sure there's maybe like three or four times a week where the kids are like, mom, don't you need to go somewhere? Mom, don't you have an appointment? <laughs> don't you need to get out of the house and leave us to fun time with dad? So uh, yeah, there there is a part of it that's hard, but it's also, there's nothing like hearing them, you know, cheer and get excited yeah. when their dad pulls up and they can hear the car coming home. That's that's pretty special. And just the way they look up to him and and the way that they take in information. I will say, I feel like a lot of times when I'm talking to them, it's rah, 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 rah. Mm-hmm. And when, when he teaches them something, I just see a captivation upon their faces that they don't necessarily have with me. And, um, so let's highlight that. Let's mm-hmm. take advantage mm-hmm. of that. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. appreciate that instead of again, getting focused on the negative and feeling sorry for ourselves that they don't do that with us there's a beauty in that and that's God's design and it's awesome. And if we work together, then we can do incredible things, but it's really hard to work together when you're sitting there complaining and criticizing and nitpicking everything that he does, mm-hmm. which I'm saying this by experience. I gotta be honest <laughs> there, there a couple of years ago, or it was longer than a couple of years ago, but we really were trying to solve some problems with our kids again, This was, you know, we were trying to make a home that heals and our home was not very healing. And so I was, I was reading all the books. I was trying to figure all this stuff out. And I was imparting my wisdom on my husband all the time. I was nitpicking everything that he was doing. Mm -hmm. I was looking, I was seeing all the ways that he wasn't doing it right. And I wasn't either. I wasn't doing it right either. But it really, it caused a divide, Mm -hmm. not only in our marriage, but just in our parenting. I Mm -hmm. could see it. It was like, um, we just weren't on the same page and we weren't as powerful. You know, I don't think that God was able to work in and through us the same way he's working in and through us now because we're a team. And instead of criticizing every little thing he does and nitpicking and and, um, trying so hard, you know, a lot of it in creating a home that heals is not trying so hard. It's appreciating and recognizing how the simple things are really powerful Mm, and we can rest mm. in that. We don't have to stress over every little thing. We can just rest and we can rest in who God created your husband or your kid's father, who he is. He is a creation made by God and appreciate the qualities and the values that he has and appreciating who God created you to be and that you are different. But, um, if you're concerned that maybe he's not being the man that God created, get on your knees, mm-hmm, pray, because mm-hmm. honey, you're not going to change him. <laughs> but yeah, God is, yeah. God is going to do a mighty work in his life and in his heart, especially I believe if you're on your knees praying and and seeking his wisdom, not just trying to strong fix him. arm him. <laughs> yeah, fix him. No, that's good. You know, I have a I have an acquaintance. I wouldn't say a friend, but I have an acquaintance, and she's divorced and has three little kids. And she was telling me the other day about, you know, some of the struggles and things. But one of the things she said that I thought was so really good, because they they have had a lot of struggles, but she was saying that he's a really good dad. Mm. And so as her friend or or acquaintance, I tried to put something into practice that you and I have talked about. I, I, I started asking her about that. Oh, tell me what, so what is he, you know, what does that look like? Mm. And then she'd say, you know, he, he really plays with the kids. And now that is huge. You know, that's so good. And so then asking more questions about that and trying to kind of paint a picture for myself, because I pray for this person regularly to, you know, to try to get that picture in my mind. But also, because I think of that scripture, you know, about think about whatever is lovely, whatever Mm -hmm. is good, whatever is true, all of that. And if you can help a friend to start thinking even more that way about even their ex, Mm. I think that might be a good thing for us to think about because it's tempting as women to sort of get into somebody else's pain and start, you know, digging that, you know, knife in a little bit harder instead of 
pulling the knife out and trying to refocus and think about the, you know, the things that are positive. Because usually, I mean, if, you know, I mean, there's situations where there isn't, but usually there's some good and it's got to be tough. I, I can't speak from experience, but I can speak from having friends in that situation and realizing that maybe we play a role to help somebody get focused on some of that too. Oh, we definitely do. Yeah. Just asking what, what's something good that he does, Mm -hmm, you know, as a mm -hmm, father mm -hmm. that is because it is, it's a mindset shift, you know, and that is why the Bible tells us to focus on what is good and lovely and pure. There's a reason why Mm -hmm, God tells us mm -hmm, to focus mm -hmm. on that because it really does. It flows through our actions and our kids pick up on that. You know, they really, really do. I, you mentioned the plane. I remember when I grumbled and complained that all my husband did was play with my kids. (laughs) I mean, slap me upside the head, honey. Like I, not okay. I just, I did that. Now I know the power of play. I know how good that is in Mm -hmm. so many ways. Mm -hmm. When they're laughing, when they're wrestling, Mm -hmm. when they, when they're getting that input, I, so now I see that and I am just like, right on, dad, way to go. You just helped me have a way better day with my kids because mm-hmm, you played mm-hmm, with them. Mm-hmm, Thank you. Mm-hmm. But we have to, ooh, we have to shift our mindset. We really, really have to do that. So I just, I would like to send us out with kind of a, a challenge. Oh, okay. I just want us to close your eyes and imagine a world where your home is just filled with laughter of your kids, where your father of your children is being acknowledged for their dedication and their unconditional love, where they feel respected. Just imagine what that could do, Mm. how that could change your home, how that could change the dynamic in your family. And I truly believe it's within our reach, but it begins with us choosing to appreciate and uplift those who have been entrusted with this noble task of fatherhood and loving them well and praying for them when we're concerned for them, but most of all, just encouraging them Mm -hmm. and speaking highly of them in front of our kids. So I would, I just ask if that's hard for you, I'm praying for you. I really am because I know that's hard. It was hard for me. There was a time where it was hard and I'm going to be praying for you. And if you have a story to share with us of how you're, you're shifting your mindset or <laughs> you're, you're getting on track with this, send it to us. Let's encourage each other. Let's lift each other up. Let's remind each other what we should be focused on and this attitude of gratitude. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and how it can change when we keep our eyes on the Lord and what he has in store for us. So you can send that to A Home That Heals on Instagram or Facebook. We would love to get in touch with you. That would be so awesome. And we just want to thank KTSY for sponsoring this podcast. This is the most amazing community. We have had a blast getting to know you, getting to hear your stories, getting to share what God is doing in our lives, and hopefully encouraging and equipping you. And if you're you're feeling that excitement alongside us, send this to a friend, share it with them, let them know, help them to be encouraged in their walk through motherhood and their parenting journey. So thank you again for being with us today on A Home That Heals. A Home That Heals is produced in partnership with 89.5 KTSY. To find out more about them, go to ktsy.org.